Welcome to the third Cycling Bulletin of October, in which we bring the latest on the Naido case and his defense before the CAS, and all the latest rumors about the 2023 Gun Tours and some stars who are confirming or not their presence in them, such as Pogaccia, Ayuso or Evenepoel. We also comment the operation of Primoz Roglic, the farewell of the legendary Philip Gilbert, two notes on doping and cyclocross, and more stuff. Tomorrow you will have the rest of the news of this last week, the update of the cycling market and the teams, with the topic of sponsorships, changes in sporting directors, a new team, and much more. Before we start, remember that it is always a great help if you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's go with the info. We begin this cycling bulletin with Nairo Quintana, who presented his case before the Court of Arbitration for Sport, CIS, on Wednesday the 12th of October, together with his lawyers and an Italian doctor, and also heard from the UCI lawyers. The Colombian is confident in his innocence, in the work of the CIS and in the strength of his arguments. We will see if it will be enough to reverse his disqualification for the Tour de France and the consequent loss of points, something in which Andrés Charria, his main lawyer, is confident, although it is very difficult to fight against the UCI in these cases. What can we expect at resolution? It is normal that we have to wait weeks or even months to know the CIS decision, although Charria let sleep that it may be made public before the start of the Football World Cup in Qatar on the 20th of November. I leave here the opinion of Johan Brunel, former director of US Postal, Astana or Radio Shack, and cyclists like Armstrong and Contador. Let's go now with a quick review of some statements made by some cyclists about their plans and racing calendars for 2023, a season for which some teams are already doing their first training camps, like Wara Hansgrove. We start with Jonas Vingego, who assured that, for the time being, he will continue to focus on the state races and will not venture too much into the classics. His great rival, Tarit Pogacar, will once again go for the Tour and Machin has vetoed his attempt at the Giro Tour double, as there are too few weeks between the two and he's still too young to take on that challenge. Grain Thomas, third in contention in the last Tour, stated that he had to sit down with the team, because right now he doesn't know if he will be in the Giro or the Tour, or even if this 2023 season will be his last. We also have the statements of young riders like Ayuso, Evenepoel or Girmay. The Spaniard said that next year he will return to the Volta with the intention of winning it, and that in 2024 he will switch to another Grand Tour to focus on. He also said that until May he will take part in several one-week World Tour races and the Ardennes Classics. As for Evenepoel, who received the Crystalline Fitz Trophy as the best Belgian cyclist in 2022 alongside Lotte Kopecky, he assured that he likes very much what is known at the moment about the Giro, and that although the Tour is a priority in his career, next year he might take an intermediate step. He also hinted that Jacobsen might be the leader of Quickstep in the Tour and Merlier in the Volta, and that he would not like to go to a Grand Tour having to share responsibilities with one of the two. Trek Segafredo's Matthias Skelmose said his targets for next season could be Paris-Nice, the Ardennes after the Basque Country and the Tour de France. Two Class 6 riders are also likely to ride the Tour next year, Mathieu van der Poel, who has assured that he will do only one Grand Tour in 2023, and Vinian Girmay, who commented that if there are several stages that fit his characteristics, he will very possibly make his debut in the next Tour de France. And finally, one I had saved from July is from Jay Hindley, who said that after winning the 2022 Giro, he would love to try his luck in the Tour and use it as a learning experience. Remember that in the races and calendar section I include the latest rumors of the 2023 editions of the Free Grand Tours. Let's go now to the section dedicated to individual cyclists, in which we start with Primoz Roglic, who had to undergo an operation to try to fix the issues in one of his shoulders, which has been dislocated on several occasions, highlighting the cobbles stage of this past tour. Fortunately, the operation was a success, but he will now have to rest for 6 to 8 weeks. Roglic was also awarded the Golden Order of Merit by Slovenian president Borut Pahor for his sporting merits, the image he has been given of the country, and for inspiring people. And another cyclist who has recently undergone surgery is Juan P. Lopez, who had to go to hospital for sinusitis surgery. We also have to update the situation of Michael Balgren after his crash in June on the route to Sitani, which caused him numerous injuries. There are doubts as to whether he will be able to compete again or if he does, whether he will return to his best level. Although he has returned to training with a roller in very short intervals of time, 
most of the time is spent on physiotherapy as exercises to endure the pain. What is clear to him is that he doesn't want his retirement to be due to injury. And we finish this section with Keegan Swirvel, who in his effort to continue competing, and as he did less than a month ago as we commented in the Cycling Bulletin 1.1, Swirvel turned to Twitter to see if someone could sell him a bike at a good price so that he could continue training when in a few weeks he can no longer do so with a human-powered health bike, a team that has not renewed his contract for 2023. In terms of retirements, we have Stefan Rosetto, 35, who announced on Twitter that this Sunday's Chrono de Nations will be his last professional race, and that of Barbara Fonseca, who, like Rosetto, has been competing in the women's Jean-Michel over 93 in recent years. This Saturday, Philippe Gilbert's farewell event took place in the Cowberg, where in addition to a fun tour along part of the 2012 World Championships course where he won, Gilbert presented a book and won the Phil and Friends Criterium where Fabio Jacobsen and Arnaud Deli came second and third, before hanging up his bike. In addition to thousands of fans, numerous cyclists and personalities showed up, such as Eddie and Axel Merckx, Greipel, Rowlands, Hushoft, Van Moor, Valan, Terpstra, Van Marke and many others. On Lotus Dahl's YouTube channel, you can also watch a video of Gilbert's experience in the days leading up to Paris tours and after the race, which was his last competition as a professional after 20 years. And we finish with the fact that, if in the Cycling Bulletin 2.2 we talk about the professional retirement of Romain Hardy, now the Frenchman has decided to requalify in amateurs for the 2023 season, because he does not want to stop immediately with cycling. It's time now for the races and calendar section, and we start with next year's European Championships. While it was already known that they would be held in Drenthe between the 19th and 24th of September, a month later than what we are used to, it has now been announced that the finish of these road races, not the time trials, will be the Bamberg, a former rubbish dump converted into a small paved and cobbled climb that we saw in this year's Dutch Championships and the Ronde van Drenthe. On to new Grand Tour rumors and the 2023 Giro d'Italia, which, while all indications pointed that it would finish in Trieste, it met well and in Rome. This would involve a huge 700km transfer after the Monte Lusari mountain time trial from the north of the country to Lazio, which the cyclists will do by plane, but the mechanics, buses and others by road. Good decision in this bid to reduce the carbon footprint. I also leave you a link to Cycloweb where they have designed this map and the route of many stages with all the rumors and official announcements that we know so far. Have a look. We'll have the confirmation this Monday with the official presentation of the route. As for the 2023 Tour de France, in addition to the rumor in Le Parisien that the last stage, which will obviously finish on the Champs Elysees in Paris, will most likely start from the National Velodrome in Montigny le Bretonnet. I'll also leave you all two links with everything that is known about the possible route of this Tour de France, with a couple of stages still to be defined. And from the Vuelta, we have the confirmation that the stage on the 1st of September will pass through the Comunidad Valenciana after a year's absence and that, according to Javier Guillén, director of La Vuelta, it will be a very interesting stage. But before any of the Grand Tours are presented, the organizers of the CBU Tour, a Romanian race at the beginning of July, have already announced the route of the 2023 edition which will be held between the 6th and 9th of July and will have two summit finishes in Balea Lac and Paltinis and a mini time trial of 3.5 km through the Cobalt Historic Center of Sibiu as the climax of the race. Let's go now briefly to the Giro de Rigo W22, which in addition to Tadej Pogacar will also feature Alejandro Valverde, as announced by the organization. Let's remember that this edition will be held in Costa Rica on the 27th of November. And we finish this section with news of the 2023 Super World Championships in Glasgow, for which BBC Sport has acquired full broadcasting rights while the CEO of the World Championships, Trudy Lindblade, hopes that between all the races from the 3rd to the 13th of August, they can reach a million spectators on the roads cheering on the riders, less than the 1.5 million in Flanders next year, but Belgium is a different story. We must also talk about doping, because the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, will update the biological passport to which many cyclists are subjected at the beginning of 2023 with a new module, the Hormone Module, which will be able to detect the use of the growth hormone. This is an addition to the Blood Module, the one for EPO and staff, and the Steroid Module. 
and from Cyclocross, we just have to point out that Snedek Stivar has started his season at GP Donani 1 and 2 in Slovakia yesterday and today, two C2 level races in which he came second and first, before the World Cup in Tabor next week. And that Mathieu van der Poel has said that he will do 10 to 15 Cyclocross races starting at the end of November. And here ends this third cycling bulletin of October, with half of this week's news. Tomorrow you will have the fourth one with the rest of the news, in the following week you will probably have two videos, the analysis of the route of the Giro d'Italia 2023, which will be announced this Monday, and another edition of the Cycling Bulletin. Remember that if you like the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time!